Hey, I'm Joel, CEO and Master Electrician of Jefferson Electric. We've been working on the countertop here today, demonstrating step-by-step -step videos. And right now I'm about to demonstrate the installation of a three-gang switch configuration here. And uh, I'm just gonna jump right into it. My wires are labeled. I pull them out here and identify them one at a time. Make sure I get everything in the proper location. My grounds have been pre-made. Now grounds are bare copper, but that's been painted over like we've experienced thus far. And all right, so here I've got my ground, which is long enough to wrap around all three, because it's a three gang box of three devices going in, all three ground screws on my devices. And I'm gonna start with that. The orientation of my device, ground is at the top, so I'm gonna prepare for that. I'm gonna wrap in the clockwise direction. Second device, clockwise direction. And I wanna space them far enough apart that I can um, seat all those devices in there with some wiggle room to the left and right so that I get a good finish and the plate fits clean. One, two, three. Now as I determine what my wires are, I can begin terminating them to my switches. Here we have the dining room cans. I'm gonna retain the label and just slide it up out of my way. I'm going to shorten up my conductor so I'm not trying to wrangle too much into the box. I'm gonna strip and do the twist. Using my number one square drive screwdriver, tightening down the screw so it's good and snug. I like the way that's seated. This is can lighting around the corner. I'm gonna slide that label up to preserve it for any future need. I'm gonna make this switch number two. This requires a hot feed. That's my hot pass out of the box. This is my final switch leg here. And this is my hot into the box designated by the flag. It's important to label every conductor every time to make its purpose and intention clear for a clean finish. So now what I have is all three switch legs have been terminated and I've got two conductors left, two black conductors in this case that are both hots. What I need is a pigtail. I've got my 14-2 Romex here and I'm going to cut off about 12 to 14 inches to create that pigtail. I'm gonna pre-strip about two inches off the end of the wire. I'm gonna come down to about a third of the way and I'm going to strip a midsection about three quarters of an inch. I want a total of four bare spots along the length of this wire evenly distributed that I can terminate one under this wire net and then two, three, four, such that all switches are fed with a hot. So I've got one, two, I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna strip three quarters there, three quarters of an inch in the final end. So now I've got one piece of copper. In doing this, I've minimized the number of connections and joints that I have that could possibly fail. This is one continuous piece of 14 gauge copper. I'm gonna take one end and I'm gonna give it that, that bend that we look for, that sharp 180 degree bend. I'm never kinking my wire. Small copper wire that gets kinked 
really hard once or repeatedly will fail. It will break at that point. So I'm being cautious not to kink my wire. I'm wrapping around one screw at a time. Again, the wire is long enough and my strip points along that wire are distributed enough that I've got some flex and play between my switches so that when I install them, I'm not constrained. That wire's not tight as a piano string. As an electrician, you'll never benefit from wire that's tight as a piano string. You always wanna have future serviceability. You wanna have latitude for movement. You wanna have excess in case there's um, necessity to restrip and terminate. You want a provision for the future. Now these are my hot conductors. I'm gonna verify with my voltage detector. And that's an insulated voltage detector. I'm gonna verify that they're dead. I'm gonna strip back just a little bit more. That's about an inch of conductor. I'm gonna take my linemans, the flats of my linemans. I'm gonna take two of my three conductors and give them a pre-twist. Careful to match up the ends. I'm gonna give them about one and a half revolutions. This 14 gauge copper plays really nicely. It's so malleable. It's, it's incredibly forgiving. It bends easily under the force of your fingers, but for a good, tight pre-twist, there's nothing like a pair of Klein linemans. I'm gonna take the one that's a little bit long, I'm gonna snip it off. Three 14 gauge conductors, a tan wire nut works well. I'm gonna give it 10 to 12 revolutions to the right. You'll definitely feel when it snugs up and you'll know when the exposed, uh, ooh, let's recheck that. Did I lose one of them? See, that's why you always check. Look at that. I lost one of those conductors. Every joint, every time must be checked and inspected for quality. That would have been a failure point right there. So I'm gonna retwist it around. We've got a good tight fit. I'm gonna check my wire nut. It's clean inside. I never wanna tighten down my wire nut so much that the sides of the wire nut are bulging and under strain. What I've done there is over tighten my wire nut or possibly I have um, used a wire nut that's too small for the number of conductors and size of conductors that I have. If that wire nut's under strain, sometimes spontaneously it'll fail over time. So I'm folding my wires into the box. I want to be mindful that this is not the finished paint, but I want to be mindful that um, the devices, the sharp metal edges, relatively sharp metal edges on the devices are not scuffing and scratching my wall. Um, I'm not too concerned about fingerprints right now, but if this were finished paint, I would be taking precautions. I'd wash my hands periodically, keep them fresh, so I don't leave fingerprints behind. I'm using my number one square drive. All right, interesting phenomenon going on here. The box has actually been depressed by the drywall, and it's too far inside the wall. My screw's not long enough to catch the threads and pull that box in. So if the, if the drywall's in the way, I might need to take an oscillator or a drywall saw, possibly a utility knife, and cut it back. But in this case, I think that I'm within range and I think I have the clearance that I'm gonna take my needle nose pliers, grab the edge of the box, pull it forward. Again, I don't wanna apply excessive force. If I do, I risk blowing out the box, the drywall. But what I've done here is I'm pulling the box such that the shaft has come in contact with the screw. And now the screw, as I tighten down the device, is gently pulling the box forward into position. I think I like what I'm seeing there. I'm now within a quarter inch, which is that code requirement we've discussed for non-combustible surfaces. These switches are gonna be secured to the surface. Not a problem. I'm not quite happy with how that switch is seated. I'm gonna use my channel locks and gently on the sides of the device, 
I'm gonna straighten it up. Actually, I think all of these I will. There, I want a good clean finish. Little soldiers in a straight line. There you have it. Three gang switch box. All switches are terminated, plates are installed. Hope you'll join us for the next video.